Biblical illiteracy is a really huge problem right now and an increasingly bad problem. It was bad a generation ago and it's getting worse. All the evidence points that direction. We're in a situation where we're, we're literally starving ourselves to death. 25% of Americans never read the Bible at all. And four out of 10 can't even tell you that Genesis is the first book of the, of the Bible. We are malnutritioned. We are actually not learning the Word of God enough so that we're feeding ourselves with it, so that our thought processes and our actions and our motivations and affections are directed by the Word of God. We also find ourselves just thinking in terms of stories rather than in terms of the main themes of Scripture, which are supposed to transform us and lead us to Christ into a deeper relationship with Him. One of the reasons that biblical literacy is a growing epidemic is well, there's a number of things. Distractions is one of them. We just live in a society with so many distractions. Here, our setting here is Southern California. We have everything to amuse us on the face of the earth. But it's not just distractions. There are misplaced priorities. So we've got other things that we hold as more dear. Sometimes it's unwarranted overconfidence. A student one time actually said, well, we already don't do everything that we know. So, and the implication being, that why should we learn more? Well, really, we don't know enough, in fact, and all the evidence is pointing in that direction. One other piece is that um, we're just very busy. And I really don't think that this is a legitimate excuse, though I want to be sensitive about this because there are some people who really don't have an easy way to get out of the busyness in their lives. But the Bible is so basic to our lives. It's so fundamental that, what does it mean? Maybe you, you, you put your kids to bed and you, and you read a little bit before you go to bed or you read to them during dinner time or you, or you plug it into your CD player or your MP3 player as you're going to work. You listen to it. Knowing the Word of God allows us to think God's thoughts after Him. If we don't know the Word of God, then we hear our own thoughts in our head rather than the things that God would have us think. So we come to a particular issue, maybe we're suffering in some way, and we try to think of how, how am I going to get through this rather than actually saying what does the Word of God say about this and actually being able to think it through. We, we face somebody who challenges our faith and we don't know how to answer them because we simply don't know the Word of God. And, we're, and we just don't have the deeper understanding of just what the Bible teaches about life in Jesus Christ, life walking in the Spirit. You just have to know those things. If you don't know them, you can't draw upon them when you need them. To end the epidemic of biblical illiteracy, the most basic thing is that we need to begin to love the Word of God. David says in Psalm 119, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation day and night. And then we pick up the Bible day and night and we read it. Joshua says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. And so that means that we read it, but not just read it, we learn it, we memorize it. And we have to work hard to do that. You know, in the, the Bible times, they didn't have Bibles they could open up. They certainly didn't have smartphones with their Bibles on them. They actually had to recall what they had memorized when they were hearing it orally. So we memorize it and it becomes part of our very being. We learn it and then we draw upon it. So that's the most basic thing. Another thing I would recommend is that you learn the, overline, uh, the overall storyline of the Bible and learn where things are in the Bible. I've just developed, along with a bunch of really creative musicians and artists and technicians and videographers, um, a resource called Bible Fluency. The subtitle is Sing It, See It, Study It. So there's music and there's visuals and there's a workbook and there's even a teaching curriculum, a leader's guide and everything like that to help people learn to mentally map their way through the Bible. And not just that, you've got an idea of how the Old Testament connects with the New Testament, how it all centers on Jesus Christ. It's about two hours a week of work for about 12 weeks to do the Old, Old Testament, about two hours of work a week to do the New Testament and when you're done, you are Bible fluent. You know your way around the Bible and that, that becomes the basis for building um, all the other things that you need to know to really 
really grow in your relationship with the Lord and, and know the scriptures well enough to have it make a difference in your life. The reason we decided to do this for free is that we wanted it to be accessible to everyone. We have no goals of making any money on this, but we have a deep burden, deep desire that people will come to know the storyline of scripture because that's the only way that they're going to really come to know God in the way that God has intended through Jesus Christ.